get God's apple supply every day. In other words, get your gas every day. Because <laughs> if you run out of gas, you can't do that. That's what the Lord gave us for today. Amen. So we want to go ahead and address that topic. Yeah. Uh, Power Pack scripture we're going to use this morning will be the basis for our topic. It's going to be this. It's going to be Deuteronomy 8 and 3 and Philippians 4 19. These are some passages we are familiar with. And the Amplified Version of Deuteronomy 8 3 says this, And he humbled you and allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know nor did your fathers know, that he might make you recognize and personally know that man does not live by bread only, but man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. Amen. And then Philippians 4.19 simply says this, and this Amplified Version as well, and my God will liberally supply. In other words, he will fill to the full your every need according to his riches and glory yeah. in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So it's, you think about that, talk about gassing up, it's amazing. The first thing that Jesus had to tell the devil when the devil tempted him, he had to say, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. And so that's our gas. And so what... Does gas up mean? And we think about this, we do it all the time. It simply means this. It means to fill the tank of a vehicle with fuel for operation. And the thing a lot of times we, we don't realize, but we are all vehicles. That's what we all are. We're human beings, but we're vehicles. If, if we run out of gas, we just like any other car, we can't run. And anytime a car runs out of gas, wherever it is, it's going to stop. <laughs> it doesn't matter where it is. It may drift a little while. But eventually it's going to stop. And so it's the same way with us. If we don't uh, gas up and get with God and have God to fill us up every day with what we need, yeah. we will run out. And once we run out, we're going to shut down. And, and when you shut down, that means you, you fall down. That means you can't operate anymore. And so that's why it's important for us to make sure we let God fill us up every day. And the devil always tries to get you to fill up with stuff that don't make no sense. You make you think it's just physical, but if that spirit man is not filled up, that physical man is not going to make it. Now, we used to hear the old folks say this, and this is where it took me back. They could, today, we keep saying abundant. Every prosperity pre- preachers eat them out. The abundant, the abundant life. We always use that word abundant, but the old folks used to say ample. <laughs> and they used to always say, baby, make sure you got an ample supply of what you need. And I used to wonder about that. What they, what they mean, ample supply? Those old, old folks were saying abundant. But we just didn't understand. Because ample supply simply means this. It means an abundant allocation. And what they talk about in legislation. Allocations of funds. Allocate, all that stuff. Now notice, this, this is the word of God. It means a full furnishing. It means a plenty of provision. It means a sufficient source. And it means this. A more than enough endowment. Uh, now, when they say when well, they were to come up, went to go and get something to eat from the table, my mom said, make sure you get your ample supply of what you need. Did you get an ample supply of what you need? Was it ample enough? They, they always say that. They would say, Is it, was it ample enough? Yes. They mean, was it ample enough? In other words, did it fill you up? That's what they were saying. Did it fill you up? And so if they sent you to get something, they would always say to you, remember, make sure you get your ample supply and take it with you. Remember that? They were saying that. Make sure you get an ample. And so they were talking about an abundance of fly. Even then, we just didn't understand. And so they were telling us then, make sure you get what you need so you can make it. And so the Bible is telling us, God's going to give us an ample supply. And he's able to give us an ample supply of whatever it is we need. So if we don't go to him, we can't get fed. And you know, a lot of people are always trying to find something to fill themselves up. And looking at something on Tyson the other night, and looking at all these rich entertainers, they were talking about uh, the Patriots quarterback Brady was talking about all the money he has. He has a, a model wife. He has all these abilities. He has three championship rings. And he made this statement. He said, it must be more to it in life than this. He said that. He said, it got to be more to it than this. And so they have all this, yet they're still looking for something and somebody. And so when you don't have God filling you up, you're always be in. Now we're going to deal with it this way. This is what the Lord gave us. What it means to be gassed up. we got to be gassed up with God's grace, 
God's anointing, God's salvation, God's purity, God's edification, God's deliverance, God's understanding, and God's promise. And notice always everything has to have God in it. If you take God out of it, it means nothing. And so all of these things are associated with us getting gassed up so we can have what we need through God. So we're just going to walk through each one of them. Now, to be gassed up with God's grace, we have to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. Yes. And he says this, and we've heard this. But he said to me, my grace, in other words, my favor and loving kindness and mercy is enough for you are sufficient against any danger and enables you to bear the trouble manfully. In other words, for my strength and power are made perfect and fulfilled and completed and they show themselves most effective in your weakness. Notice, so God says when we're weak in ourselves or when we have Him, we're strong. And people just can't understand that. They say, well, when we think we're at our lowest point, we just can't go no more. That's when God fills us up. You notice? When we empty ourselves out, that's when God fills us up. And notice it says, Therefore, I will all the more gladly glory in my weaknesses and infirmities that the strength and power of Christ the Messiah may rest, yes, may pitch a tent over and dwell upon me. And so, it's strange when God said, Okay, when you pull it out and you empty, that's when I fill you up. Now, but think about it, it makes sense. You can't fill the full gas tank. What happens when you try to fill up an old fuel gas tank? You spill it and it becomes wasted. You can't use it. Once gas hits the ground, you, can, you don't want to put it in your tank. Once it gets to something dirty, you don't want to use it because it'll mess up your engine. Yeah. It'll mess up everything operating. So when you are pouring out, that means you're doing what God wants you to do. God's going to constantly fill you back up. And this is Paul talking because he was talking about a thorn in his side. And he thought the thorn was hindering him. And God was saying, No, that thorn is not hindering you. It's just keeping you as a, and giving you a reminder that you need me. And as long as that thorn is there, I will fill you up. I'm going to take care of that thorn. Don't you worry about that. My grace is going to take care of you. In other words, it says sufficient. My grace is more than enough. Yeah. Next thing we talk about, we gas up with God's anointing. In every situation in the Bible, you saw God has selected someone to, to, to perform a work for him. He anointed them. When Jesus got up and talked about starting his ministry, that's the first thing he said. The Lord has anointed me. And so, look what Isaiah 10 and 27 says. And it shall come to pass in that day that this burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Remember back in the day, now the kids now, they don't have to worry about this nowadays. Remember back in the day when you would get sick and you can remember this. Y'all, some of y'all probably remember it. You caught it right at the time you would do this. Whenever you would get sick and you caught a cold, what would they anoint you with? They'd go get, they'd go get that big sand. They call it big sand. And they call it big vapor rub. They say, get the big sand. And they get it rubbed from under your mouth, right under your nose, and rub it on your chest. With, and then they cover you up. If you were smelled up, what happened? You opened up once they did that. Once they anointed you, you started to feel them. And so look what God is saying. If you want to do what you need to do, you've got to let them anoint you. Yeah. Now, I was listening to a minister. I remember when she was a little girl. She was talking about we you knew her. Talking about when she was growing up. And the children at school would tease her because her mama would take oil in the, in the winter time and just rub her face down. So when she went to school, her face just was gleaming because she would wipe her down with that oil. But the kids would tease her, but she said she never caught the flu during flu season. And y'all remember that? The old folk would grease you down. <laughs> yeah. And we thought, why are you putting this on me? The kids were talking. But we didn't say Anointing. Yeah. When God gives us the anointing, that protects us and gives us everything we need. But it's, it destroys the yoke. Whatever's holding us back or trying to hold us back, it breaks it. Yeah. Then he says, gas up with God's salvation. If you're not saved, you can't do anything. Look at Psalm 68 19. And the Lord just gave me the scripture, just stays with me. It's one of my favorite passages. The New King James Version says this. It says, Blessed be the Lord, the, who daily loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation. Say love. So look at this. He daily loads us. He gives us 
feeling is not on Jesus. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. He gives us benefits. Same gives us burden. But it says he does this every day. The Amplified Version says like this, Blessed be the Lord who bears our burdens and carries us day by day, even the God of our salvation. And still our means pause and come to think of that. God provides for us every day. He gives us benefits every day. And a lot of people are always talk, I'm, I'm waiting for the Lord to bless me. The minute we woke up this morning, Lord, we still breathe, breathe, and we still bless. God is blessing us as we speak right now. And people, a lot of times, they don't realize that. If you still breathe and able to, if you're able to say, Lord, bless me, you bless blessed already. And so, it all pertains to the salvation, because if you're not saved in Christ, you just like to sit us down, you just walk in bed. You have nothing. Then we say we gas up with God's surety. And Hebrews 7 and 22 says it like this. King James Version. But so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Yeah. Amplified Version says, In keeping with the oath, greater strength and force, Jesus has become the guarantee of a better, stronger agreement, a more excellent and more advantageous covenant. Remember, said, make sure you have a guarantee. Whenever we buy something, what's the first thing we always have? Doesn't have a warranty. <laughs> That's your warranty right there. Yeah. God said, You want the warranty that I'm going to do it? Jesus is the warranty. So if you have Jesus, you have a guarantee that God's going to do what He says He's going to do. And even God said, Jesus told us, When you pray, He said, Pray what? In my name. So the first thing you do when you got to go to the service department and get your car checked or whatever, the first thing they ask you, Are you covered? Do you have a warranty? Do you have a guarantee? Yeah. And that was the old for you to say all the time. So I'm make sure you get a guarantee with that thing. Don't just buy it and get a guarantee with it. In other words, get yourself assured that everything will be taken care of that needs to be taken care of. Yeah. And so if you don't have Jesus as your surety, you're already in trouble. Yeah. That means you got to come out your own pocket. you got to try to fix it yourself. And that's the thing. We can't fix it ourselves. Yeah. Then it says, gas up with God's edification. That simply means this in Romans 14 and 19. It says, so let us then definitely aim for and eagerly pursue what makes for harmony hmm, <laughs> and mutual love building. And that's a mutual love building means this in edification and development of one another. The world is missing this part. Seriously missing this part. Because look what it says. To pursue what makes for harmony and mutual love here. You got everybody, you got over 30 people getting ready to run for president, and all of them talking bad about each other. Ain't nobody building nobody up. One was, was boasting and uplifting the Dudley family until a week ago. He was the main advocate of the Dudleys. Now that this issue is coming with the Dudley family, he took them off his website. It don't have nothing to do with it because it's going to impact his politic, political campaign. But you don't see them promoting harmony and mutual love and everybody about tearing everybody else down. That's why everybody's running out of the game. That's why they're always tired and stressed because they're not building each other up. When you build each other up, everybody's strong. In other words, when you have harmony in the workplace, in the home or wherever, that's what they call high morale. When, when morale is good, things go better. When morale is down and everybody's empty, it's hard to get anything done. And so look what he's saying. Cast up with God's edification. Let God build you up. And when he builds you up, when he gives you harmony and peace, and then he said, a peace that surpasses all understanding. He said, keep your mind on him, and he'll keep you what in perfect peace. Yeah. That's the edification of God. It goes back to this, the old folk put it this way. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. Yeah. When God builds you up, you ain't got to worry about it and pull the rope out of money. But when man does it, man got this statement. I built you up, I take it down. Then it says, gas up with God's deliverance. Philippians 1 and 28 says this. And do not for a moment, I notice this is what the Lord says. And do not for a moment be frightened or intimidated in anything by your opponents and adversaries. 
For such constancy and fearlessness would be a clear sign, proof, and a seal to them of their impending destruction, but a sure token and evidence of your deliverance and salvation and that from God. You ever know when somebody tries to get you upset and they ask you this question, why are you not upset? And if you don't get upset, they get worried. And it's the first thing in their mind, he or she, they up to something. They plotting on me. No, <laughs> I'm not plotting. I'm just not worried about it. And you always notice when they talk about Daniel throwing lines in, what happened when he threw the lines in? They said he went to sleep. Even Jonah, Jonah was in the, in the, in the bed of the, of the ship. Everybody else in turmoil, where did he go? He went to sleep. He knew it was that, that God had him. Even though he knew he had made God mad, he still knew God had him. The disciples in the ship rowing, Jesus, what he said, at the back of the, the ship, what? On a pillow, doing what? Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> we was looking at something about Kennedy last night. They said, and all the things that was going on with Nixon, everybody was stayed up trying to figure out who's going to win. They said, where is it? They said, he went to sleep. When you give it to God, knowing that God's going to deliver you regardless, you don't have to worry about anybody. You don't get intimidated by anybody. That's why David didn't get intimidated by after life. He said, while I was tending my sheep, he said, the Lord allowed me to kill bads and lions, so why am I worried about you? Well, you know God's going to deliver you from anything? He said, I'm going to deliver you from anything? You don't worry about that. That's why I did. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? That's when you need to feel that we're delivered. Yeah. Then it's important that you be filled up with God's understanding. Because everybody, everybody's educated. I don't know who say educated now, but don't know how to do anything. Proverbs 3, 13 and 14, it says this. Happy, blessed, fortunate, enviable is the man who finds skillful and godly wisdom. And the man who gets understanding and know what it says. Join it forth from God's word and life's experience. From God's word and life's experience. For the gaining of it is better than the gaining of silver, and the profit of it better than fine gold. And do you remember this? You remember coming up to the old folk to say this, always have a word. Always have a word. Yeah. When you say something, people can stand by that. But they always say this, baby, make sure you got to understand. Understand what they're telling you. Get good understanding, child. Yeah. When you got good understanding, that'll take you old folks to take you a long way. That's what they even say. Good understanding will take you a long way. But actually, if there was the scripture, they probably couldn't tell you where it came from. But the Holy Spirit put it in their heart. This is the important part too. Gas up with God's promises. Second Peter 1, 3, and 4. New Living Translation reads like this. By His divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. That's full. We have received all of this by coming to know Him. The one who called us to Himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and his excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature, and this is important, and escape the world's corruption caused by human desire. There are people in the world always trying to tell you, you need to change. You need to be like, come like this, and you want to make it. And the minute you do, you fall. Yeah. But that's important. It says, these promises are the ones that enable you to share his divine nature, which means you take on his image. That's why he said, you created in my image. You take on his means. You have a likeness like Jesus. But then it says this, allows you to escape the world's corruption caused by human desire. So, when somebody promised you something and you lock in on that promise, you remember when you were a child and uh, Deacon and the son said, I promise you, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you this, you would hold on to it, wouldn't you? <laughs> we ain't going to get it, I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it. 
And you would hold on to it. You would, but you promised that. But that promise would keep you focused on what you need to do. For Christmas, promise would be good. I get it. But boy, you work hard not to do nothing wrong. I'm being good. I'm being good. And God saying, well, you guess with all this promise. We talked about this before. Over 30,000 promises. You can't count all the promises of God that he has in this word. And whatever he promised in his word, if you remind him of it and you follow that, he's going to do it. The other thing is to be open to God in order to get gas up by God. Before you put gas in the tank, what you got to do? You got to open the tank. If you don't open the tank, yeah. you know when people used to put the locks on the gas tank, people were going around cycling gas out of the car, and you used to go by the, the cap with the key on, and if you messed around and left that key, you couldn't put gas in your own car. I was many of the people I saw that sometime, boy, if you get that key, man, you got a screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> you get screwed out of the brick that if you don't open up, you can't get gay. This is how you open up. Open up by being obedient to God. Deuteronomy 11 27 it says this. It says, Now this makes a prosperity preacher man. If you base it on one scripture, they get hot. You will be blessed if you obey the commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today. They say Creflo Fear gonna get that sixty five million dollar gift. Because they have told him if they give him his jet, then they're gonna be blessed. But this is what it says. You will be blessed if you obey the commands of the Lord that your God, Lord God has given you today. Obey the word. Obey God. Yeah. Second way you open up. When they say prayer is the key, they don't lock the door. Yeah. Open up by being proud to God. Luke 21 36. Jesus said this. Said, Keep awake then and watch at all times. Be discreet, attentive, and ready. Praying that you may be may have the full strength and ability. And be accounted worthy to escape all these things. In other words, take it together. That will take place. And to stand in the presence of the Son of Man. The devil doesn't want anybody to pray. The old folks, the old folks, the old folks say this. No, they say, watch at the gate. Watch fight and pray. They would say that all the time. You know, watch, watch fight and play, child. Keep watching at the gate. What gate? Ain't no gate. <laughs> Keep watching the gate. But no one said, when you do this, you have full strength. That's why the devil don't want you to pray. What, what's the cliche? Little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power. And it is all prayer, all power. Because Jesus prayed all the time. And what did Jesus say? Man should always pray. So if you want all power, pray all the time. <laughs> Then it says to be open, you have to be, be engaged to God. 1 Corinthians 6.17 says this, But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Remember Jesus said, I'm one with the Father. And he said, be one with me. If you're one with me, and you abide in me, I abide in you. You can do all things. You can do nothing without me. The down to five verse says this, But the person who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. And what did Jesus pray for all of us? He said, Lord, Father, I pray that they all become one. That they would be one in us and one with us. And we'd be one together. And that's the key. He said, you have to be one body. And he said, there's only one body, one church, one faith, one... That's it. And so when God said, let us, one, follow the Son and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. They're all one. They're all united. And this other thing, be open by being nourished by God. If you don't eat, yeah. if you get starved, you starve, you get weak. Well, the devil tried, then you notice the devil went out to Jesus. He waited until he figured he was hungry. And look what he told him to try to nourish himself with stone. It was stupid, really. But know what 1 Timothy 4, 6 and 7 says. If you lay all these instructions before the brethren, 
You will be a worthy steward and a good minister of Christ Jesus. Ever nourishing your own self on the truths of the faith and of the good Christian instruction which you have closely followed. But says, refuse and avoid irreverent legends, profane and impure and godless fictions, mere grandmother's tales, and silly myths, and express your disapproval of them. Train yourself toward godliness, piety, keeping yourself spiritually fit. Everybody want to go to the gym and be all ripped, six pack of their spirit messed up. Spirit is not right, no matter what you look like on the outside. When he said white sepulchers with dead man bones on the inside, he said, Don't listen to all these wives' tales. That's what that means. And all these fiction. There are more fictionary books and writings of men on how to focus on God and how to prosper in God, but none of them stick to the word itself. He said, don't get caught up in all those debates and arguments. Know the word. You know, Jesus never argued with anybody on the word. If they asked him a question, he asked him a question back. By what authority do you do what you do? And he couldn't answer it. He didn't want to answer it. Because they would always get themselves in a bad situation. Feed on the word. That's your gas. As long as you fill it up with this, it doesn't matter. You can fill it up with this, and the thing about when you fill it up with this is just like this. If you have enough gas in your car, and somebody else runs out. You have enough you can get in to get in on the way. Yeah. I remember this even sometimes. The car run out, and nobody had a gas tank, and no fellow could keep that little siphon and hold in their car. Yeah. Because sometimes you had that gas station open. And they pull a hole up me. I just why they get that hole hole in that tank. Yeah. <laughs> Some people that put it in there. I'll give you about three gallons that get you to your house. Yeah. yeah. People don't do that today. They would take gas out of their car and put it in somebody else's car and get them where they need to go. They don't get you to the next station down the road. You gotta make sure you got it okay. But just in case when the law has to use you to help fill somebody else up, if they're running low, you'll have the ability to give them some, but you'll still be able to keep going. And that's key because the devil knows if you run out, you can't help nobody else. Yeah. You sure can't help yourself. I know. And if you can't help yourself, you can't help nobody else. The devil wins. And you shut down. Make sure you open up and let God fill you up every day. That's just a simple thing. Yeah. Open up and let Him fill you up every day. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, come on in. Fill me up, Lord. Fill my cup. Let it overflow. I want to suggest and recommend and invite that you be open. Be open so you can be obedient, so you can overcome. If you be prayerful, you can prosper. If you be engaged, you can excel. If you be nourished, then you can nurture. God puts in us so we can put out and give to everybody else. And he said, he said, he told Abraham, blessing you, you're going to bless others. And so as long as you're a blessing, and see, that's the key. If you bless him, God going to keep giving you so you can bless. Yeah. But if you ain't blessing, if all you're doing, Lord, bless him, you stop following. <laughs> like the man who had the bomb, you won't use and give it to nobody. He's going to take you out yeah. so they can be given to somebody else. That's the whole key. As long as you're blessing, God's going to keep blessing you. Yeah. Simply say this, we end in fill up and function. Simple as that. Fill up with grace and function with goodness. Fill up with anointing and function with assurance. Fill up with salvation and function with satisfaction. Fill up with surety and function with serenity. When you sure of yourself, you have peace in yourself. Fill it with edification and function with expectation. When you build up, you have expectation of something's going to happen. That God is going to do something. Like the old folks said, you did it before, you do it again. Yeah. What you said, Deacon? If you trust Him for some, trust Him for all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fill up with deliverance and function with delight. 
fill up with understanding and function with unction. That's what the whole for that boy got unction. And when you understand stuff, you don't have to have a problem going forth and saying something and doing something because you have understanding. And it says this, fill up with promises and function with provision. Because that's the key. God promised to give us what we need. He promised to supply us what we need. He promised never to leave us and never forsake us. He promised to be there for us. He said, I'll never leave you. What did he say? I'm not going to leave you comfortable. I'm going to send a comfort to the key. That's all his promises. And when you function on the promises, you got all the provision you need. You're already equipped with everything you need to function. But if you don't use the promises, it's like if you got gas sitting right there, but you don't put it in the vehicle. And you start saying, I can't go nowhere. Gas right there. <laughs> put the gas in the vehicle, and you can go. But if you don't put gas in the vehicle, don't sit there and say, well, I can't do nothing. Well, no, because you're not filling up. Fill up and function. And let the Lord feed you up and everything be all right. So get God's ample supply every day. Get your gas every day. 